Y ahora Gabriel dice, el Gabriel dice, no me digo nada. Movies don't cause violence, they cause violent filmmakers. If movies cause violence, why was there violence before movie? You always think about the, the apocalyptic version about everything. It's terrible. I talk about this in therapy. O si una mentada, por ejemplo. Chinga tu madre. Yeah, I had some weird, I've had a lot of weird, weird nights. And I will say this, the phone killed it. Hollywood used to be fucked up and dark. The idea was so real, it was like, it was on the dark web and I thought, if this page is real, then of course they're gonna kill me. Which moment did you become this kind of uh, people that, uh, that uh, could watch all these things and doesn't affect in a level that that uh, uh, just turn your, your your face to another place? Remember when I was a kid and I saw horror movies, I used to throw up. Coming. I'm the fucking boss of impressive. this country. I've never seen that. I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> Ay, pues bueno, eh, damas y caballeros, para los que no hablan inglés, for the people that don't speak in English, because I'm, I, I know all the languages. Entiendo. Eh, ah, how's your Spanish? Terrible. Me, ma, me, but, how do I say but? Mes, ma, pero, pero, entiendo mucho más que habla. Ah, muy bien, muy bien. So, este, sí. Hablo Spanglish, me, entiendo, <laughs> entiendo mucho más. Señoras y señores. Eli Robin, el escorpión al volante. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. You came to Mexico just uh, to know me because you it's want true. to make a, a movie about me. Right? It's true. I love Luchador. <laughs> I love driving. I love Mexico, and I love YouTube. And you combine all of them. Yes, but I'm not a wrestler. I'm I'm a, a god. A god. Yes, the god of the internet. Y aquí tenemos el día de los muertos. What do you think about the Día de Muertos? I'm sorry I missed it. I've oh, it's so I love it. I love yeah. and I and I've seen in Los Angeles. But I've always wanted to go. I was in a Morelia Film Festival. Yes. And I, everyone said Morelia is the spot to go for Dia de los Muertos. I came in at one in the morning. I totally missed it, but I love it. It's so beautiful. If you want to be more Mexican, you have to say Dia de Muertos. Dia de Muertos, not Dia de, okay. De los Muertos, it's so amazing. That's very gringo. I'm so super gringo. What is it, Dia de Muertos? Dia de Muertos. Or is it Dia de Muertos, way? Exactly. Is that right? When do you add way? Because I heard that way. Way is like dude. Yahweh! Yahweh! A huevo, güey! Yeah, like, dice, no me digo nada. Ah, no, ya no me dijo nada. I know that one. <laughs> I know. No me digo nada. Yahweh! <laughs> Those two are Mexican, I know. Y el Gabi dice, y el Gabi dice, no me digo nada. Dice, no, dice. Ah, no, ya no me dijo nada. So I know the, some naco. I know naco, some yeah. naco terms. It's like uh, this tone, this accent, it's yeah, from wait. the center of Mexico. Center, okay. Que tranza, güey! Que tranza, güey! So is it appropriate or is it racist? If I say it? <laughs> See, he knows you. I'm very yes, popular. I, it's great. I the, the, the most famous people that you're gonna meet in all your life. It's it's very exciting for me. <laughs> it's a beautiful car, very do, appropriate. Do you know some famous people? Do I know some famous yeah. people? I, I do know some famous people, like, yes. Like who? Well, I know you uh, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, at the top of your list. Eugenio Derbez. Eugenio Derbez is my, my assistant. He's your assistant. Of uh, course. I know. Uh, but it's my 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 father-in-law as well. Oh, he's your father. Oh, so you're married to Aislinn Derbez? <laughs> yes. Okay, I know. I know. You see, I know a thing or two uh, about a thing or two. She's single, she's single now. I know Guillermo del Toro. Oh, really? Guillermo del Toro is my friend. He's great. The, the, we love Guillermo del Toro. Yeah, he's very impressive. I give uh, him the, his first cake in his life. And is that, what about Alejandro Gonzalez Iñarito? Alejandro G. Iñarito. 
<laughs> oh, it's G. Oh, he shortened it. Why? Yeah, I don't know. He said, he said that it's it's very complicated to say Gonzalez. It's you know, there's two <laughs> Paul Andersons. In, really? in there was Paul Thomas Anderson and Paul W S Anderson. One does Resident Evil and one did Boogie Nights. So yeah. Which is the the talent the talent one? Well, they're both. It's sort of neck and neck. They're very both very talented. For the people that uh, doesn't know about uh, assassins and blood and that kind of thing, yes. <laughs> please tell me which is the movie that you that you came for. That I came for. I came here for. Uh -huh. It's called Viernes Negro. Viernes Negro. Viernes Negro. In America, Thanksgiving. We have it, but yeah. you don't have Viernes, you don't have Thanksgiving here. We, we have, have but, but we have these sales, Viernes Negro sale, where everyone, we have dinner with their family, and then you run to a store and you try to kill as many people as you can <laughs> to get a television or a waffle iron. Because people love to eat waffles while they yeah. watch TV and they go on sale. Yeah. So you have dinner and you say, I'm so that's, thankful. That's the Black Friday, That right? is the Black Friday. Yeah. And then you go and you just you kill blood and there's videos on YouTube of people the the gate smash the doors go yes. and everyone tries to kill each other for a television it's like an american battle royale it's like a sport yeah we, we have a copy in the last years that call uh, the buen fin the buen fin buen fin buen fin it's uh, basically all the stores go up uh, the, and sell, yeah. the, the prices and then say hey, it's 50 off oh, right yeah so you're right. so it's basically the same price <laughs> yeah but you think it's a sale exactly so and everybody fee. goes to yes uh, buy everything that they and they need. yeah well they started it used to be at you know 10 in the morning or 9 in the morning when the stores open then it moved to midnight uh -huh. So like 12.01 a.m. So people were waiting and then people started showing up at 10 o'clock, 6 o'clock. So now you're not, then people are waiting in line eating dinner, having yeah. their dinner in line waiting for the store and they just, <laughs> there's just a brawl for it. And, and there's the Thanksgiving that it's uh, the, the equal for Christmas for us, the yes. Chris, Christmas diner. It's important for Americans. It's uh -huh. not religion. I mean, they have Christmas. But for me, the problem was there was never a November horror movie <laughs> and I would have like Halloween you watch movies every day and then November 1st was like the most sad you have Dia de los Muertos so you get to continue yeah, the, the and have a November beautiful two. festival with death and skulls you guys are great at it but we don't have it we don't have that in America no we have to wait maybe there's a killer Santa Claus movie <laughs> maybe but usually you wait until January uh -huh. so the I said Krampus maybe <laughs> yeah ex Krampus exactly yeah. Krampus or killer Santa but that's it and you know, I'm Jewish, so the Christmas killer was never that interesting to me. <laughs> so I, I like them, but I waited until January when you get a new horror movie, and I thought I must do something about this injustice. Uh -huh. We need to see blood and mayhem on the screen in November. So, Viernes Negro, and I wanted to make a movie that was back to my roots. You know, like a Green Inferno I made, and Hostel, very, and Cabin Fever, very violent. So yeah. I love horror movies, and I know in, in Mexico they do too, so I feel right at home here. What is wrong about Americans that everything nice want to uh, have uh, blood and um, violence and that kind of things? Well, Americans don't really have culture. <laughs> We're not really from, no one's from America. Yeah. Everyone escaped violence. Like my grandparents escaped, you know, Russian violence and pogroms and the Nazis. So everyone came here and the way they took the country was they killed all the Native Americans. So it's a country that's born from violence yeah. and guns without a lot of culture. <laughs> and so in Mexico, okay, yes, it was Spanish, obviously came here, uh, and you have a Mexican culture. In America, it's a mix of so many different cultures, which is great, but no one really feels ownership of the country, no. and everyone's fighting all the time. <laughs> so there's a lot of guns, and people love violence. That's just how it is. That's crazy, It used right? to be safe. It used to be, I grew up, and it was like a Steven Spielberg movie, and you could ride your bikes. It was like Stranger Things. Uh -huh. Everything was safe. There was maybe one you know, one kid got kidnapped once 20 years ago. Now it's like every week people are getting shot. It's terrible. <laughs> wow, it's yeah. a, I joke, but it's a crisis. I yes, wish of course. you worry about it, the safety, um, but I don't know what's going to happen. But historically, uh, in, in these late uh, times, uh, a lot of people uh, po po point the finger on you. And in, in, in movies like yours, in movies like uh, your friend Tarantino, and, and say, you are guilty of this kind of violence in the country. You should not, don't do that. What do you think about that? It's silly. It's uh -huh. childish. And nobody really believes that. Uh -huh. I mean, it's like saying, 
movies don't cause violence, they cause violent m filmmakers. <laughs> I am the res movies, when you watch too many violent movies, you get me. Uh -huh. Movies are a reflection of violence. They've always been. Here's the thing. If movies cause violence, why was there violence before movies? Exactly. <laughs> and how many people have killed in the name of the Bible? Yeah. How many people kill in the name of religion? That's why people kill because of like fanatical beliefs or they'll read something in religion and go, this allows me to blow that person up. So if we really wanted to end violence, why don't we just say, there's no religion? Well, that causes bigger problems. <laughs> so it's people not being, it's easy to point the finger, but yeah. now you can, anything you could see in a movie, now you can see it on their phone. So that argument sort of means Yeah, the, the Bible now. and the or any, Anything yeah. violent, you're gonna watch it on TikTok. TikTok <laughs> is, if you wanna end violence, end social media. Uh -huh. That'll calm people down. Because I think social media makes people crazy. Twitter or now X, everybody's it's in hate. Everybody's angry. Everybody want to cancel like, I know. and say a lot of it's fucking things about everything. It's sad. You know, we used to just hug it out, or you'd get in a fist fight after school, and it was over. <laughs> but, one on one. But yes, I, that. <laughs> but I think social media and all of the, they are designed. We're emotional creatures, and they're designed to fire our emotions, so we stay in this state of agitation uh -huh. and you're seeing it with depression i think that social media at first it was great but now it's really become something you're certainly seeing it with a hatred i'm seeing the hatred against israel is crazy like there's so many things that are you can stir up violence people get angry they they repeat stuff right away and it's designed to do that whereas before if you had a difference with someone you could talk about it you could discuss it uh -huh. and people were seen as a full person not just you know 260 or 280 characters so it's very hard you know we we react emotionally to imagery it's like you know social media it's like we're constantly being hit with a propaganda machine all the time yeah. e everywhere and we can't go seconds without it so it's too bad now you have a uh, but it's also a great way to advertise a movie because yes. if you're honest negro it's 19 november <laughs> exactly uh, now you have your main point for your next movie Social media, blood is social media. <laughs> it's unfortunate. It, it was so fun. It also used to not count. Like when social media started, it was stupid. It was uh -huh. a joke. And yeah. we all, everyone was just saying dumb things to be, it was, let's be funny. Uh -huh. And then suddenly they started getting quoted in the newspapers. We're like, Twitter's not, that's not real. And then suddenly it became real. And then we saw it in America in the 2016 election with Russian interference and all these things. And you realize how much of the information you're getting is fake. There used to be, when we were kids, when I was a kid, a long time ago, you'd watch the news and there was the person on the left, the person on the right, in the middle, but that was the news. Yeah. Now you only, if you only listen to people that you agree with, you're never gonna hear the other exactly. side. So you just become more and more convinced the other side, and they want division. I think people fighting, you know, you're watching these tech billionaires. We keep saying like, there's so much in misinformation why don't you stop TikTok, stop Instagram? They don't want to do it. Yeah. They'll let terrorists on these platforms because it keeps people fighting. That's what they want. You always think about the, the apocalyptic version about everything. It's terrible. <laughs> I talk about this in therapy. <laughs> that, it's bad. Okay, it's bad. Let, let's start it's the therapy. I can Eli, tell me, what are your dreams and your neighbors? <laughs> well, the truth is, look, my nightmare is, I have the nightmare that I, this happens to me all the time. I show up to set and there's no camera uh -huh. and there's no film and everyone's going, what do we film? And I go, uh, I don't know. Those are my nightmares. <laughs> I get boring nightmares. I don't have, because, because the fun ones, I, I make them in the movies. So when I go to sleep, I just dream about not finishing the film. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think I have a tendency, which is a gift and a curse that I <laughs> yes. think, I think it makes great horror movies. But it also, I get, you know, I'm trying not to be reactive. I have friends who can see something terrible, process it, and think, well, let's think of what's the smart thing to do. Whereas me, I just, I go, I get, I want to get the bat and go crazy. Yeah. I'm like an animal. So it's good and it's bad because when I channel it into horror movies, it's good. But I always, I go from zero to nuclear annihilation in <laughs> two seconds. Yeah. And that's not the case. And then I'm almost disappointed if it didn't happen. I'm like, what I thought this, I thought I was right. I think you, when you hear some, like any song, any happy song in your head, there's a violence scene. It's terrible. 
It's terrible. I listened to Hannah Montana yeah, before exactly. the bat scene in the Glorious Bastards. It just made me just brought something out of me. I don't. I'm not a violent person. I don't fight. I mean, I I box. I like, you know, I I like sports, but I'm not a violent yeah. guy. I'm not an aggressive like aggro fight starting person that's never been my I will avoid a fight you know and always find a way out of it you don't fight any any time with with your own fist no I got into one in high school that was it and it, and it got broken up in two seconds it wasn't even a real fight you won or you lost no I won I shoved him and he got scared <laughs> and that was it because uh, no one expected it from me they're like whoa I've never been in a fight but yeah, I said because I you have a bat on your hand well I didn't have, <laughs> everybody in Boston has a bat though when I grew up where everybody because you like you reach in the back and you get the bat that's totally yeah. I thought that was normal I moved to California and everyone's like people get in my car and go do you play baseball I'd say well I did when I was a kid they go why is there a bat and I go what do you mean in case someone starts a fight they're like you're going to take out a bat at a red light if someone honks at you yeah. I go well they they're going to have a bat so I better have a bat they're like Nobody has bats in California, so that's a very Boston thing to drive around with a bat. Have marijuana now. Yeah, well, now everyone is so high. Everyone's just on on marijuana and fentanyl. They love fentanyl. I, I heard so, sometimes that, uh, for example, uh, Tarantino thinks about first of the song and then yes, it, it gives him the him idea, the, the idea or the imagination for making a, a scene. Have yes. you uh, do you have the, that kind of process? Yes, I do. I actually have a playlist called movie songs. Uh -huh. I don't know what movie they're going to go in, but they're songs that I want to use in a movie. Movie and songs that, that are not in the movies. No, right? I have I have it on my like songs. If I go on my Spotify uh -huh. and I look at my playlists, you know, playlists. Like what? Like which one? Well, like well, I'm not going to share them. But you see, you see movie songs. Uh huh. I'm gonna I like drive around and think about like those songs. Yeah. Like you said, it's your curse and your and your gift to have that kind of imagination. Curse. It's a curse, and I talk. I, I think about that, and the problem is, I talk to myself, and I had to tell my wife. I was like, just so you know, part of the way I write is I'll check out. Like I have a shut off where I'm like, and it's just me, and she's like, who are you fighting with now? And I'm like, no, she's, I'm like, I'm writing. She's like, what just happened? I'm like, because it's like I'm in the, the real world. And then a switch goes off, and I'm in a scene in a movie, and it's written. I don't feel like when I'm writing, I do, and I talk about this. Quentin goes, "My pen is my antenna to God." Yeah. And when you can get in that, where they call it the flow state, and it's sometimes you're driving and you're in it, and you can sometimes train yourself to get in it, or I have to lie down like I'm about to go to sleep to visualize, but I will sometimes fully see an entire scene from a movie, mm -hmm. or I'll dream it, and I have to write it down right then, or it's gone. Yeah, and, and it's kind of difficult because the horror movies are, uh, there's a lot of horror movies, there are a lot of uh, slasher movies, and you have to build something like different, like in this movie, you you have this uh, this assassin, this uh, slasher, Yes. and uh, how, how do you uh, get to that kind of, of, uh, of assassin, in that kind of situation? Well, Did I you think... Dream it or you just watching we, a, well, a my, image? Or? Yeah, no, my friend and I have been thinking about it since we were 12. Uh -huh. When you're 12, that's, you're like pure, like your ideas, yeah, exactly. you're like, your ideas are just so, like you, it's hard to love anything the way you love stuff when you're 12. Uh -huh. You know, like the way you love a movie, the way you love a band, the way you love a song, the way your best friends, and you're 12, 13, 14, it's like your entire life. So we thought of this killer And we'd, we'd see the pilgrims, you know, we grew up in Boston, in Massachusetts, and in school, you know, Thanksgiving is where the pilgrims, Massachusetts and Plymouth Rock, that's where they landed. Can you tell the Mexicans what is a pilgrim? A pilgrim are the first people, the Dutch, the, the settlers that came over and the Dutch settlers that came and stayed in, the, and from England, they came over and they founded America. They landed in Plymouth Rock uh -huh. in 1620. And they had these big hats called the Capitans, a certain style of dress. And they tried to move into America, but they, they almost died. They didn't know how to farm. They didn't know the land and they were going to die. And the Native Americans, the mm -hmm. locals, they invited them for dinner and they mm -hmm. saved their lives and they showed them how to survive the winter and where to bury corn. And they had this feast where they're all afraid of each other and they had a beautiful feast. And then the, the Americans, the, the, colo the colonists, they survived. And then they eventually killed all the Native Americans <laughs> and took their land. So it actually, so, so they would have been better off letting them starve to death and America would have been fine. 
but you know now <laughs> but, but, but the dinner is a nice have, thing it's a it's a it's a I'll, nice thing so yeah. yeah so every year we have a dinner to be they call it thanksgiving to be thankful for what you have and to think about the less fortunate or the and, blessed that you and have. the blessing it's like this is we all have our health so it's a day you're supposed to stop complaining and go you know what we're going to stop everything and get together with your family even if you hate it but most people hate each other so <laughs> at, in school you do plays they they have the villages with the first settlers from 1620 where they've rebuilt the village uh -huh. and as and as school children when you're like 10 you go there and this is how we made the butter and this is how <laughs> and i would just think what if you fell in the butter maker and you got ground up <laughs> what if you every single thing to me was like this instrument of death uh -huh. and i'd see these pilgrims walking around with these axes sharpening the axes uh -huh. and as a kid you're thinking what if this person just chopped someone's head off <laughs> You could kill so many different ways, and I'd never seen it. ¿Qué pasó, Ronaldo? Ronaldo, dame el escorpión dorado. ¿Qué tranza? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Cómo estamos? ¿Cómo va todo? ¿Todo bien? Todo, ¿Todo bien. ¿Quién es el escorpión? ¿Tú eres el basurero asesino? El pavito, mira. El pavo, eh, the, the turkey, the turkey. ¿Dónde? The turkey. ¿Dónde está el pavo? ¿Dónde está el pavo? Pavito, mira. Ah, oh, Pavito! It's a sign. Ah, it's a sign. Yeah, we eat pavo in Thanksgiving. It's Pavito. I like to take a classic image, like someone takes Santa Claus and you put an axe in their hand uh -huh. and it's shocking, but no one had taken the image of the pilgrim and put an axe no. in their hand. But I also don't only want an axe death because you can do someone with an axe a couple times, but I like a pitchfork, I like a table <laughs> saw, I like to, oh. I like variety yeah. in my kills. I don't want to see, you know, sometimes you watch, you know, Friday the 13th is fun because he has the machete, but he's got so the sad. Roman candle and he, he mixes it up. Yeah. You know, in, in My Bloody Valentine, they put, you know, when you put a drill press through someone's head, that's what you want. You don't want to just see someone with a, a knife every single time. That gets boring. Yeah. <laughs> you have you know, a, a lot of options. You know, with the axe. Right? Yeah. It's great. And you have a, a very scary thing because they, they are like, a, 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 instead of turkey, there's a, 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 a full body. Yes. A, a human live, turkey. A live a, well, not anymore. She's, she becomes. <laughs> A human, I thought that was funny. You're thinking, what do we cook on Thanksgiving? A turkey. So what, and they tied up the legs and the feet and you put little chef hats on. So what if we did it with a person and made a human and he did a dinner where he served the human. The revenge of the turkey. Exactly. Where he served the human turkey. So yeah. I, I, th I always think, because that's what everyone else is like, oh, we're being thankful and they have a, you know, we're eating the turkey. And I thought, well, if you were a turkey. You'd probably want to see a human on the table. I always think of it. For, I think of it, you know, from the animal's point of view. What's the process of the pitching to your actors when you tell them that they're going to be in this kind of situation? It's a little strange, but they want they want to do it. Uh -huh. I say, here's the deal: if you're going to be in this movie, I will give you a classic death. <laughs> but this scene is going to be crazy and you have to, you know, just pretend there's a human turkey in front of you. <laughs> and so the actors are good. I think that actors that want to be in a horror movie, uh -huh. that call me, they beg me to be in the movie. Please, I, I have to be in this movie. I have to be in this movie. I think there's like some darkness yes. buried or some like pain. <laughs> actors have a lot of pain that they bury and mask by <laughs> pretending, you know, for happy. So when like they make... Patrick a, Dempsey. <laughs> I won't say anything. Patrick's great. No, Patrick's great. He's he's the best. But actors have something that in a horror movie, they just like, it's like letting an animal out. They can scream. They can cry. You know, Patrick Dempsey, the first day of shooting, he had to break up a fight between two guys. Uh -huh. And, you know, on Grey's Anatomy and his romantic comedies, he's very nice. He's a doctor. Yes. <laughs> But the two guys, the two actors are friends. Uh -huh. So they said, we're really going to fight. Uh -huh. And you're really, no, we're not acting. You're going to, we're going to fight. And you can throw us. And he's like, you sure? You okay? They're like, no, yeah, yeah. And we went, action. And he's like, get the fight. He's like, get the fuck. And he broke up the fight. And they kept going. And he kept like really shoving them. Uh -huh. And he's like, you, dad, you over there. And Because he, he's the police. He's the sheriff. Yes. And I yelled, cut. And he had the biggest smile. We burst out laughing. And he said, I have always wanted to. Do you know, he goes, do you know how long? I've been waiting to do that because you know Patrick he's a race car driver he's yeah. Formula One uh -huh. he, like I think he won Le Mans he's he is one of the best race car drivers really? Formula One oh yeah he has a Porsche team he's retired now but he's a team I mean this guy 
he left Grey's Anatomy uh -huh. and he's just you know the Panamera he's like he's in all of them uh -huh. he races through like the desert through Mexico through Le Mans and this guy is like a serious uh -huh. serious race car driver so he he, he loves adrenaline he right? loves adrenaline and he never get and then there everyone wants to be like sweet and on a date and romantic <laughs> and we're like no let's you know you're tracking down a killer and blood and fighting and you know all that stuff so it, it, he got to see another side of him but the actors when you're doing that scene and they're screaming you know like they let it out like they feel so good like the first day we're like okay let's let them go to a dark place and <laughs> they work up the tears and I give them time you know because I'm an actor too so I understand I'm like give them time to do it to react to save your voice and then we go and then by like day three they're all like joking around and, and like that and, ticked, and then we go action like ah! <laughs> like they go right into it they love it actors love it they yeah. love to scream and cry and go crazy it's, their, it's I'm telling you when actors go insane it's their favorite thing and with yeah. me they have permission to do so they can't do it in they can't do it in their other movies they can't do it on their other shows but with me they're like oh we get to go crazy <laughs> this will be fun you have been in Hollywood for a long time can you share with us any story of real life that comes a nightmare that, it, for example, somebody that you don't imagine that could have this dark side in his body and then came out and that you have heard or, or inspired him? Yeah, I had some weird, I've had a lot of weird, weird nights. And I will say this, the phone killed it. Hollywood used to be fucked up and dark uh -huh. and people going to strange places, but with cell phones, People don't. People behave because they're being recorded all exactly. the time. So sometimes it's in but private before? houses. But before, I remember when I first came to. Uh, this is a great. I remember I was. I needed money for my first movie, Cabin Fever. I was uh -huh. so desperate. I needed. We were trying to get one and a half million dollars, but I had never made a movie. So uh -huh. you have to go to some crazy rich person and convince them. And my producer said, "Okay, I know this guy, but he's a drug addict. But he's legitimately a billionaire. But it's, but he's like." He has a lot of money, but he can't stop. Like, he'll be doing drugs all the time. So you just have to understand he he can function, but he's on cocaine like crazy <laughs> every, every, every second of the yeah. day. So I'm like, okay, I don't care. I want his money. You know, I'm like young. I'm in my 20s. So we go to his hotel room, and I'm like, this is going to be like boogie nights. Like, what the hell is going to happen? And we go to his hotel room, and, I, and I, I've never, I swear to God, I've smoked weed. I've never, I've never done coke in my life. I don't. I'm like a very scared that I'll be allergic and I'll die. I've never. I th I'm sure I'll have a heart attack the first day. <laughs> never done coke. Never. So I've never seen drugs like this before. And I have to act cool, uh -huh. like this is normal. So he's like, "Tell me about your movie." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, "Okay, it's cool." Yeah, I know those. You guys. want yeah, some? Yeah. No, like, no, no. I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, yeah, no. We can, we can do it. I'm we, full. Can, I'm we, full. we can do it. Right. So I'm like. And I'm, and I'm going, this is, what, is this what you have to do to be a movie director? And he goes, and he's like, yeah, it's great. It's great. You know, and, and he's about to like say yes. Then he goes, we got to go to a party. We got to go to a party. We gotta, and I was like, all right. My, and I'm like, what do we do? He's just like, we, we, now we got to go. So we go to this car and we get in this car and we drive to this house. And I'm like, I've never, I don't really know Hollywood. I'm in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. And they go, where are we going? He's like, we're going to the Dee Dee's house. Dee The Dee Dee. That's code for drug dealer. So <laughs> exactly. I go to this. Now I learned that. So we go to a house and it's like a mansion <laughs> with no furniture. Uh huh. And I was oh. like, this is getting fucking weird. And everyone in the house is on drugs. And where did you sit? Well, you don't sit because there were cardboard boxes and there was garbage. People are like sitting on the floor. Uh -huh. And then I go and it's just like he's walking around and everyone there, it's like all the people that are drug addicts in Hollywood, you'd have to know that all the rich people were just like all doing drugs in this house. And I'm like, it's real. Like everything they say about Hollywood, like I'm never invited to like- And you watch a, a lot of the uh, orgies, famous? The sex, I never get, well, I'm looking for famous people, but like trying not to. So, <laughs> but everybody thinks that I'm like part of this That's because good, of if course. you're there, you have to know like the eyes of a password. You are the circle. So I walk in the room and everyone's doing drugs and there's this Russian magician <laughs> and he's doing these card tricks, making cards float. And everyone is like out of their mind on drugs. And this Russian guy is like doing cocaine and doing card tricks. And I'm like, is this how you get to be a director? And, all? <laughs> and so then I get separated from this guy who's like gone off to some room to do drugs. And I'm like, I think I need to get out of here because this is getting weird. And yeah. I don't, there's no end to the story. This is like either the police show up or I'm going to get stabbed. And 
<laughs> so I'm looking for the producer, friend of mine, we've gotten separated, and I go and I look up in the hallway and I look up, and there's a kid I grew up with, like from high school. Whoa. And he looks at me and he's like, Eli! <laughs> What's up, My dude? Friend. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck is this place? Everyone's on drugs. Then I realize, oh, he's part of it. <laughs> he's of he's in on it. He's doing it. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, yeah, this guy's really weird. I'm like, I, I think I need to leave here because now I'm because he thinks that I'm now like a drug. And we got out of it. I did get some. He helped us with get some free T-shirts and some <laughs> sponsorships. So we did get some stuff for the movie. Uh -huh. I was like, we didn't get the money. But he put us in touch with this brand and this brand, and they'll give us stuff for the movie. Uh -huh. But I was like, this is... And then he gave me the keys to the hotel room. He's like, just go back to the hotel. I'm not going to go back there. Just order room service. So I think I actually went back to the hotel, and I was like, at least I'm getting breakfast. And I ordered a bunch of room service and charged it to him. Uh -huh. But that was weird. But that's one of those things where it wasn't like you were in a car and get, you know something horrible was going and someone got stabbed. Like, But I was like, this could go very... You know, you, you think... You go there with the best intentions, like, hey, we're having a meeting to raise money for a movie, and next thing you know, you're watching a Russian magician <laughs> make cards float while kids you went to Hebrew school with are, like, on drugs. Uh -huh. And then you're eating room service, charging it to the guy, going, well, that's it. So, yeah, that's what Hollywood used to be like. It was weird. I think you have, like, this uh, guilty pleasure uh, part of you. I love it. I love it. It's Wait. everything I wanted. It's everything I grew up hoping I would see. So something like that that happens, it's crazy, but I'm not like, I'm never going out again. I'm like, well, that was fun. Who else can we need for money? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I loved it. But that's my, that's my sensibility is that if there's like an adventure or some weird story, I would always do, and I'm getting better at not doing that, always do like if something was slightly dangerous but could be a good story. I was like, ooh, I want to go there. I want to see. I would ah, never do it. But it like, you know, even in Green Inferno, I was like, let me just go to Peru and take a boat on the river Chazutas. <laughs> I go to Chazutas and get on the Rio Wayago and just go up until we found this pueblo, this little village, Cayanayacu in Peru. Uh -huh. And we asked them, we just got out there, huts, and we're like, they'd never seen a movie before. And we're like, can we make a movie here? Like, and then going on that in the river on the boats every day with the crew sometimes there was a flood in the andes mountains and the river rose and the boats almost capsized and i was like wow i'm i'm gonna kill everybody this is bad <laughs> this is gonna be like that warn that cautionary tale but we made it we survived i mean we when we spin the, the airplane crash mm -hmm. we had people up 30 years you know feet in the air and we spun them 700 you know <laughs> twice around and it was crazy but you know, we all did it. It was fun. Like, look, I try to be very safe on set, uh -huh. but I I'll, I will often put myself at risk, like looking for that location or going somewhere or trusting some shady person because I just like, I'm so interested in all aspects of life. I don't want to like live in a bubble. And right, even when I made my documentary about sharks, uh -huh. um, I said, I have to go to Liberia. I went on a shark fishing boat and the fishermen started revolting and I was down in the freezer and I, you know, we had armed guards. It got like very tense, you know, yes. and, and I had to get the footage Real and life. we weren't and but I had to I said if I'm gonna make a movie about the death of sharks and the shark fishermen I can't say everyone is evil I need to understand them mm -hmm. and go on the boat and talk to them but I couldn't tell anyone I was doing it of I was course. editing my uh, movie the house with a clock in its walls and I said I'll be right back and I got on a plane to Liberia with the Minister of Defense flying me in and we went but it was great footage and it was important for the story so um, you know, there's a part of me that's like, obviously nobody wants to die and I try not to do anything stupid, uh -huh. but I was like, I've, I've got to get the shot. I've got to get the shot. Like the, the directors I love, Werner Herzog, you know, they were insane. They were like these madmen director that just went crazy and got these incredible films. And I always wanted to be that. But kind of a suicide mission, you know, that there's there something that goes wrong. Yeah. It could be very bad for you, even yes. uh, uh, life or death thing, right? Yeah, I, I try to never put anyone else in danger. I should say, but should say this, my sets are extremely safe, and that's most important. No, no, but I'm talking but, about but, your, your, your research, yeah. your, research, your rehearsal. I wanted, I wanted yeah. hostile. I saw the website where you could pay somebody to kill. Whoa. I wanted to know if it was real. I wanted to make hostile as a documentary. <laughs> I saw this posting going, for $10,000, you can go into a room and let someone kill you. Yeah. And the money will go to your family because someone wants to know what that feels like. And I thought, really? what if I could find someone, find the person that wants to kill somebody, and then find a family that was so desperate they'd let themselves be sacrificed. And then I thought, how can this be real? Okay, if it's not, it's probably not real, but the idea was so real, uh -huh. it was like, it was on the dark web. And I thought, if this page is real, 
then of course they're going to kill me. They're not going to want it out. Exactly. So I'm going to write a story about it. But I, I wanted to. My original idea was I need to go and find someone who's going to do this. It's like finding someone who's volunteering to be in a snuff film. It's like the worst thing you can imagine. Like you're so desperate to do that, to get that money. So, but I was like, I have to make a documentary about it. But so look, even when I made the shark fishing stuff, I still had fishermen. I mean, I got threats, yeah. but no one came out. But that, that time in Liberia, that was, that was like sketchy. But, but you know, you went in with Israeli special forces and the, the Liberian coast guard uh -huh. and we boarded the boat. We did it properly, but the fishermen, you know, they, they, they attack, they'll, they have nothing to lose. They're, they'll fucking come at you. I mean, it's, then you have to shoot. It's really, it's, it's dangerous. I don't, I don't want to rile up a situation to get anyone hurt, but also, you know, if, if, if I, if I do everything for safety and what's smart and right, I'll never do anything. Yeah. You have to be a little bit crazy to do it. There has to be <laughs> exactly. something wrong with you to like risk that, everything to what, do this. Well, I want to know what's wrong with you. In, in which moment did you become this kind of uh, people that, uh, that uh, could watch all these things and doesn't affect in a level that, that uh, uh, just turn your, your, your face to another place and you have to, to watch every scene, everything that it's real, but you kind of enjoy to rehearse, yeah. to, 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 to know more about that dark thing of yes. the, the human race. In which, <laughs> in which moment, moment did you become this kind of a man? I, I know the moment. Yeah, really? I do it because I had my brain scanned for discovery to uh -huh. understand why I do this. Uh -huh. And I had a, a neurologist, that, like a, a top brain oh, scientist, like put me in an MRI and scan my brain uh -huh. and show me imagery to see how my brain reacts. And he said it's like a one in a thousand brain where when I see violent imagery, my frontal lobe, which processes the imagery, shuts off. Uh -huh. So I don't allow myself to process it emotionally. He said most people, their brains are like this and they see something violent, it goes crazy. Yeah. He said, my brain is this all the time. And that's rare that every color, every sign, this is my brain is like an overdrive absorbing everything. Yes. And I can remember things visually, like it happened stuff from 40 years ago. I can remember like it was this morning, uh -huh. not everything, but it's like wow. I play a movie of it. It's weird. Yeah. But then when I see something violent, I get so upset. My brain won't let me, it like puts a block. It shuts it out. It stops. It's like you peaked. You can't see it. So it's not that it doesn't affect me emotionally or now I'm not a sociopath, but He's like, you go into a state of psychosis. You're a part-time psychotic. <laughs> and I said, why would I do that? And I remembered when I was a kid and I saw horror movies, I used to throw up. I was like, what? I would vomit. Really? Oh, yeah. And it wasn't even the movie. It was the anticipation of the movie. I saw Alien and I was like, what? The Exorcist. What? And my parents were like, this movie Outland where heads explode. And then my it became a self-fulfilling prophecy because my wow. parents were like, well, you're not going to vomit. Are you going to vomit? And I'd say... Well, no, no, I'm not gonna. What? You know, they, and then we were watching a movie, and they'd look at me, and I, and I ran out of the theater and projectile vomit. It was like a rope that went over. Like people were sitting there on a date, and some kid ran by and vomited on them. So I, I had to train myself to not react oh. emotionally. And then Raiders of the Lost Ark came out, uh -huh. and everyone was saying it. And my, my parents said, "You can't see it because the faces melt. You're gonna vomit." And I went and I saw the movie, and the faces melted. And I didn't vomit. I was like, "I didn't vomit. I didn't vomit." <laughs> And then I, I, I looked at it like a magic trick. I wanted to know, and you're, you know, you're Jewish, you have your bar mitzvah at 13. <laughs> Most kids are having a dance. Uh -huh. We watched the horror movie Mother's Day and I was cut in half with a chainsaw. Yeah. And so I was like, my grandparents and cousins were like, what's going on? Like, ah! <laughs> This is not normal. But for me, I, I, I was so interested in, people were like, what do you want? You know, do you want some like a college scholarship? Do you want, I was like, I said I wanted fake blood, liquid latex, <laughs> videotapes to make films. I only wanted makeup and videotapes so I could shoot and fake blood, so I could shoot and fake body parts. And then and your parents said, Let, let's put our child in therapy. My parents said this is, my parents were great because my dad's a psychiatrist and my mom's a painter. Oh. My mom's like, this is like painting. My dad's like, this is totally this is healthy. <laughs> It's art because I'm so well behaved. I do great in school. I'm never, I'm like the babysitter. I'm the one everybody trusts. Like if a teacher leaves the classroom, they'd be like, Eli, make sure nothing happens. Like I was that kid, you know, like, yeah. okay, I could, you know, I was a camp counselor. I'm like, you know, responsible. So, you know, that's, it's my way of like misbehaving with the movies. But I remembered I got to the point where those movies didn't affect me at all. And I would just dare myself to watch more and more and more and more because I just looked at it like makeup. Now, obviously, if I see real violence, it's deeply upsetting. And what's going on in the world now is, is 
trauma, you know, it's not, it's not like I don't process it, but when, but for me, I put it in the category of art. Yeah. There's nothing. Does it, I can go, and if it grosses me out, if I go, ugh, <laughs> and I know it's fake and I'm setting it up and I go, ugh, <laughs> that's how I know it's going to work for an audience. What is it with, with you as a, as a director, but also as an actor? Why do you want to be in both sides of the, of the camera? I don't want to. No? I mean, I, I like it. I love it. But I, I like... Look, here's the truth is I love all sides of it. I like performing. Uh -huh. Like you, I like being on camera. It's fun for me. Oh, yeah. But I was never the kind of actor that's going to fully dedicate themselves to the craft of yeah. acting. But acting under Tarantino, I thought this will make me a better director. Yeah. And will make me... Will give me the vocabulary to work with actors. I need to understand... I worked with actors in my first three movies, but I said after Glorious Bastards, now when I'm directing Kate Blanchett, or wow. when I'm working with Jack Black, or Jamie Lee Curtis, or Russell Crowe, or Patrick Dempsey, I can really approach it from a much different place. Yeah. You know, it's not like just setting up the camera and killing. Even though I thought the acting was great in my first three films, I really wanted to be an, known as an actor's director. And then I did Knock Knock. You know, it's Ana de Armas' first English language movie. Yeah. With Keanu Reeves and Lorenzo Itzo. And, and so doing that, which was a pure acting piece. And you, that's, you make that's a what love story, blood. a horror story. Yeah, well, that's what, that's what <laughs> you know, she got cast in Blonde because of yeah. that. Um, and so that's, that's what's fun is when you can, when I want people to, you know, I used to watch horror movies and sometimes the acting was good, but usually, but like The Shining, but most of the time the acting was terrible because they didn't care. And I thought, exactly. that's not an excuse. Like, It's a horror movie. That doesn't mean it's supposed to be bad. Uh -huh. You can still have great acting, even if they're getting killed, even if they're in a scene going, hello, hello, and everyone's <laughs> going, don't, don't, don't. So for me, it's always having fun cast, casting interesting people. Uh -huh. You know, a lot of act, uh, horror movies, they just cast like very good looking people or popular sh people from a show. And I like, I don't mind casting good looking people, but I, they have to be interesting. I have to watch that person. Like, if you were sitting and they walk by, you'd say, who's that? Or what are they going to do next? That's uh -huh. the key when you're casting. So, but when, I like, when I'm acting, I feel like a director. Like, I had a great experience acting with Sam Levinson. But I had an incredible time. An incredible time for Inglorious Bastards. I always feel like when I'm an actor, I learn something new as a director. Yes. And, like, working with Sam Levinson watching the way he shoots 35 millimeter and the way he writes a scene. I love his writing. I love Euphoria. I think Sam is an amazing director. Um, and just getting to watch him and watch his process and watch how he, he moved the camera and set things up and, you know, the way he orchestrated, okay, all the dancers are down here and now you guys walk in here and like those kind of chaotic, fun, Robert Altman style scenes. I loved it. So it's also very freeing where you don't have to worry. I'm like, I can just show up and do my lines because I like to be funny and think of jokes and think of other things. So I'll get the lines and I go, what if I add this? What if I add that? So I like when actors know the lines, but then they offer you a little something. Yes. So I always want to be, for any director that I work for, I want to be the dream actor. Uh -huh. I'm there on time. I don't complain. I know my lines. I have a positive attitude. I keep it light on set. I keep the energy <laughs> up and I try to make everybody else look good. Make, you, make the fellow actors in your scene look great. ¿Qué tranza, caras de mi miembro? What's up, faces, dick faces, dick faces. You can't say dick faces. Yes, yes cara de mi miembro. Cara de mi miembro. Yes, Hi. dick faces, how are you? How are you? ¿Verdad que en That México way. no tenemos tiempo de pelear? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo se pelea uno? Así, chinga tu madre, fuck you, y ya sigues. It's his mother! It's his mother! It's terrible! I'm sorry! I'm sorry, lo siento. I, oh my gosh. Perdón, perdón. Is there, is there any relation between your life in Boston with the bat and that scene in Inglourious Bastards? Oh yeah, very much <laughs> of a relationship. Did you, did you suggest no, the bat? Or? No, that's how Quentin is on another... That's how I know he's tuned into some godlike frequency with his writing. I said, how did you know about the bat? He's like, I don't know, I just thought of it. I'm like, no, but you intuited. You knew that everyone in Boston has a baseball bat. You just understood mass holes. We're such dickheads to everyone. We're such fucking assholes to everybody. And we love it. So you have a bat. Because fuck you. I remember that. You honk, they get the bat, you get the bat, you what? And then you go back in your car because you both have a bat. You need a bat. It's so stupid. I've never used it, but it's, it's right there. You keep it right there. So with your right arm, I can do the move. Just like, you know, you're just like there with a the bat. And one what? thing like, and, it's, and it's like what? what? 
what motherfucker what <laughs> you just like just you, but you gotta like insult them like they're a little kid like <laughs> really dude really really in Mexico we insult but, we, we prefer words because we don't have time to fight just fuck you fuck you and then, you and then that's it <laughs> yeah. they don't fight is that the Mexican style exactly for example hey tu chinga tu madre <laughs> so he doesn't have time to fight with me. He doesn't have me. time to fight with you. Exactly. <laughs> He's also, too busy. I'm in between you. <laughs> so for him to reach you with a bat, he's going to hit your friend. Exactly. I'm, I'm actually, you have like a giant wall. <laughs> you know, yes. of the American. You, when you put the gringo in between the two Mexicans, <laughs> I offer a layer of resistance to whatever, yeah. you know, if he shoots you with an arrow, it's going to go through me and probably uh, stop yes. in my neck before it gets to you. Your imagination, Nick. Just can. saying. I'm just saying. If he takes the machete and I go, ah, it's going to go chop off here, get stuck in there, and then there, you know, and that's it. I'll just be stumped. What was the direction with Tarantino? He said, just, just do your thing. Oh, they told, t told, told you. Well, something. we had to rehearse it because it's a stunt in the bat and the person, but and how you're going to do it. But Quentin wouldn't let me shoot it. I was in the back in that cave and I asked to put in a pull-up bar and weights and a punching bag. So I was just like, the crew said they set it up for me. So I was like, uh -huh. I wanted to come out like an animal let yeah. out of a cage. <laughs> so Quentin, we, for three days we were shooting that, or four days, where Brad's interrogating the guys, doing the thing. And he's like, we'll get to you, Eli. Oh, here he comes. Watch out. There's the guy's going to fight you. It's a bad fight. Get the bat. <laughs> Get the bat. Look, I'm telling you. Oh! See, I told you. I wasn't kidding. ¿Qué pasó, cara de mi miembro? A ver, traigo a mi amigo Eli. He's my friend. Hola. Uh, he wants to learn, quiere aprender que, uh, un insulto en, en español. What's an insult in Spanish? Insulto, it's a, it's a bad word. Oh, or, okay. Yeah. We don't, I don't know. ¿Una mentada? O si, una mentada, por ejemplo. Chinga tu madre. Ah, Chinga sí, tu madre. Chinga okay. tu madre. Chinga Chinga otra, tu madre. otra más mexicana. Vete a la verga. Eh, sí. What's that one? It's like... The, the, the traduction, literally, it's go to the cock. Okay. <laughs> but it's like, fuck I don't, you. I don't think they had that one in Blood In, Blood no. Out. <laughs> so Tarantino told you something? So he told me, so basically he's like, yeah, we'll get to your scene today. And then he wouldn't. So I was just getting madder and madder and madder and madder. <laughs> and finally he just like let me out. Uh -huh. And I went crazy. Like, and it like was a, so, a, a fear dog, like an angry dog. Yeah, I was just went wild on it. And then we had to shoot the guys like laughing at me uh -huh. and they'd been watching me do this we'd turn the camera around i'm hitting they were like there was a dummy that i was hitting because it was just the camera was on the bastards and then i started fucking the dummy <laughs> and they all started laughing and quentin <laughs> but quentin said look i i said to quentin i said look if i'm showboating i gotta say something i said i want to rant uh -huh. and i was like a boston guy would start bragging and you know giving him a show so I was like, Donnie, Freddy, Teddy, fucking Williams hits it out of the pack. He went fucking yet on that one. Like real, real Boston <laughs> slang about baseball uh -huh. and expressions. And our, our script guy is from Boston. So he was writing down. And Quentin's like, I don't know what you just said because it was in real Massachusetts language. And our yeah. script guy, Marty, was like, oh, I got it. That's perfect. He said he went. Uh, hey, fucking Williams knocks it yeah. out of the pack. On his feet for Teddy, fucking ball game. He went yacht on that one. <laughs> that was like so. You know, it became a whole. So Quentin was cool because he trusted me enough that uh -huh. I knew the character so well. You know, with Quentin, his dialogue is the most precious thing. So you got to hit it letter perfect. But if he trusts you, like me, he'll let you do a thing. And I was like, Look, I got something. Can I try it? And he's like, Go for it. <laughs> but you never, you never make up a thing with Quentin without his permission yeah. he wants it exactly the way he wants it and then you're like can i try something and if you have to like okay okay and if not yeah. i'd be like nope i got it all right yeah and, and is that true that tarantino always repeats the scene over and over just because they love movies yes <laughs> sometimes we'll do an extra take for fun because we because we love movies uh -huh. when we were shooting <laughs> we had it we were shooting Death Proof. Uh -huh. And there's a scene where he's like, we're going to do fucking Irish, it was like Irish car bombs. We drop Jägermeister into a Guinness. Yeah. And he's like, the camera's going to go around and he's acting in the scene as the bartender and I'm acting in it. And he's like, he's like, it's going to be a steady cam scene. So I got to be in the scene. I can't watch like, the camera comes here. You walk by, you say your line. He's like, now guys, I'm really fucking drinking this. So you got to get it right. You got to get it right. And we're like, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. And the steady cam guy's like, yeah, you sure? He's like, because we got to, there's no playback. We got to, like, make sure. Uh -huh. And then so he's like, all right, the car bombs. And he's like, he goes, <laughs> he's like, action. So the camera goes, I walk by, and then there's the shot where it's like, Jaeger, 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 boom, boom, boom. Quentin drinks doing it, then they go here, and then this one cries, and they go, cut. And Quentin's like, do we get it? And they're like, <laughs> because I'm drunk now. And then they're like, no, no, no. He goes, <laughs> the camera guy's like, yeah, actually, that was, that was, that was pretty great. And we're like, good. We got it. And Quentin's like, well, well we got one. Let's just, <laughs> let's just do one more. Let's just do one more. And he's like, you can do a little bit. Another round. And so then, so then we do another round. They're like, and we're shooting nights. So now it's like three in the morning or four in the morning. And and they're like, okay, so I come here. I say my line. Da, 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 and then they go, Jaeger, Jaeger, Jaeger. And Quentin's like, boom, 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 boom. Do the thing. Quentin like drinks the whole thing. The camera goes. And then they're like, and Quentin's like, cut. Do we get it? And he's like, actually, I didn't think we could do it better than the first one. But this, this one might be better. And Quentin's like, mm, I felt like I could have done it better. So we're like, okay, okay. And everyone starts looking at me because uh -huh. they're like, you're his friend. You got to tell him to stop. Like we're, <laughs> we're it's like six in the morning now. I'm like, let's do another one. And, and I'm like, so I do my line and Quentin goes, boom, boom. And Quentin goes, wham. And he slams the glass down and it shatters and he cuts his hand. And he was like, whoa. Uh -huh. And so now we got it. He's like, do we got it? He's like, ah. Damn it! Oh, okay. And so we let it wrap up Quinn's hand, and we got to clean up the glass, uh, and we got to clean up the beer, and it's on everyone's costumes. So it's like an hour to clean it up, and Quentin's like, and we're all, and everyone in the scene is like, Eli, please, you got to get him to stop. And then Quentin's like, <laughs> so now we have to do take four, and it's like, boom, 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 try, and then someone bumps the camera, and Quentin's like, come on, guys, what the fuck, what the fuck, and we're like, and basically, it, it, it I, I, all I remember is, is Quentin, like, we got one by, like, take six, and everyone's like, we're gonna go home, <laughs> and, I'm gonna, and I did this, I, this, because you could do this back then, uh -huh. Quentin's like, I think we got it, I think we got it, and I just went, Pussy! And he's like, one more for Eli! And everyone in the whole bar went, you fucking asshole! And I was like, what? And funny. I was like, Quentin, you know, let's get it. If we're going to get it, I was like, you can't drink. I, I basically, it was so stupid, I dared him to drink. And then we did the drinks. And I think it ended, I don't remember much about the end of that night, but it ended with a number of us vomiting in a dumpster. Of course. There was vomiting in a dumpster, and then we had to go back and shoot the next night, and everyone was like, wow, that show was great. I don't even, I can't even remember. I don't know if it made it into Grindhouse. I think when you watch Death Proof on its own, it's in. I don't even think it made it in the movie. But yeah, that was, we, we have a great time on set. Do you think I can uh, pass you? You? No, not a chance. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna happen. Excuse me! Excuse me! I don't think he hears you. Este, señor oficial, el dios del internet. Good Oye, tengo you. que llevarlo nada más al hotel. Me da chance de pasar o qué? Al, al Four Seasons. Coming. I'm the fucking boss of impressive. this country. I've never seen that. I didn't think that would happen. Chido de la banda. ¿Cómo están happened. oficiales? Bueno, ¿Cómo vamos todo? Todo bien. Oye, nada más voy a la lateral de ese circuito. Ahí justo a ese hotel, pero no puedo pasar de ninguna forma. Allá, allá adelante ya está lleno de carros alegóricos. Pero no, de Carlos pero no voy a pasar a reforma. ¿Y lo vas reforma. a dejar atrás del desfile? ¿Qué hago entonces? Tú dime. Cruzarte y por, dónde? por Mariano Escobedo. Mariano Escobedo, te da la vuelta en Chapultepec y ya llegas a la lateral de reforma. ¿Me regreso o me voy para allá? Te sales por ahí, por ahí que, que te dejen salir, dile, voy a Mariano Escobedo. Eli, it's, it was Scorpion. nice to meet you and I wish you the best uh, with your new movie. Thank you. And I think it's going to be a very, very good movie and very good with, with the public, with the audience, but not, not as well as the, the one that we're going to make together. I think this movie will be more popular than anything I could ever make in my life, where oh. we got trapped. It's like a nightmare <laughs> where we got stuck in the maze of a Dia de los Muertos parade. <laughs> Can you tell me your social media for following yes, you? Yes. Because you have a podcast as well. I don't, but I did. I did. Not really. Uh, <laughs> it's I've done podcasts, but I don't have like a regular one. It's Real Eli Roth on Instagram. Uh -huh. I think there's a fake ones out there, but that's the only one I really, that's the only one I use. The, the one with the, the check mark. Yeah. The one with the check mark. Yeah. It's Real Eli Roth. There's uh -huh. another Eli Roth. I have to either, you know, 
kill him or take his handle, but let him have it. I'm real Eli Roth <laughs> on Instagram, and that's it. Which are your top three of your own movies? Of my own movies? Yes. Wow, that's a great question. It's kind of like picking your favorite children. Obviously, you know, Cabin Fever is your first movie, so you're going to love that. Hostel is the movie that, like, made me famous and paid for my house, so <laughs> obviously I'm going to love Hostel. And then, you know, the others, I have a soft spot. I, right now, it's Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving might be my best. So, finally, Eli. Yes. Now, you are part Whoa. of the power of the internet. You are wow. part of this story, and this is the mass that makes you wow. a god. The god of I don't know if I'm movies. ready to... Oh. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about what will it's happen. It's a possession. If Careful. I know. It possesses you. Oh, this is really beautiful. <laughs> yes, it's for you, is man. Is this your own special design? <laughs> yes, it's the, it's the new one. Dude. It's the new face of it. This is serious. You know I'm going to yeah. wear this when I go to uh, in Comic-Con in America? Yeah. When you don't want to be recognized, you wear the Lucha mask? Yeah, when you have my mask, you... Uh, but you everyone will know it's me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but this is great. This is an, it's a great honor. Yes, it's for you. And you when you are... You, you get angry in, your, in the set. I'm just going to put this on. Yes, what if I do what, what, I'm going to direct wearing this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to send it to you so you can see me on set yes. shooting a scene. Of course. In a scorpion dorado. Yeah, the, the golden scorpion. The golden scorpion. Man, dorado. this is cool. Let's finish with the with the scream of power. Pelucha de la estuche. Pelucha de la estuche. At the same time. One, two, three. Pelucha de la estuche. <laughs> <laughs>